I want to reiterate first that our council is very committed to bringing down the tax rate as low as possible because we understand everyone is struggling. Now, I can't promise a final outcome for next week's council meeting because we need a full discussion and we're actively looking at ways council budgets can even contribute to lowering the expenses as well. That is to say, the budgets for our offices. But I am glad that we've already come down from what was previously approved last December. That's an extraordinary feat with a nine-figure hit projected already to our revenues for this year. I also want to address recent talk of going into deficit or being given the ability to do that. Edmonton City Council feels very strongly that deficits are the wrong financial course for our city in this crisis. Even encouraging municipalities to run deficits could make it really difficult for communities to rebound from this crisis and doesn't recognize the stark financial limitations local governments already face. Property tax growth slowly lags economic growth and doesn't even adjust for inflation on its own. So without access to revenues that actually grow alongside economic recovery and that would quickly replenish our coffers, deficits would op open up a financial sinkhole that could erode the financial health of communities large and small and many around us might never recover. The government of Alberta has reduced its education tax levies for 2020 so the overall tax rate for municipal and education tax combined is a 0.8% reduction for residential property owners and a 0.9% reduction for non-residential. Some good news is that we believe we can proceed with our capital construction program as originally planned for the, the remainder of the 2019 to 2022 capital budget cycle. And this will help mitigate the impact of further economic slowdown in Edmonton and prevent job losses in the construction sector. We will address the 46.5 million reduction in transfers to our pay-as-you-go capital reserve fund at the beginning of the next capital budget cycle starting in 2023. Our recommended budget addresses our immediate challenges and is also mindful of the longer term. We are not recommending emergency deficit budgeting or allowing our financial stabilization reserve to fall below its minimum levels. This would commit us to paying back funds over years to come. Today we released council reports that outline the administration's recommendations for updating the city's 2020 budget to respond to the challenges of the COVID-19 crisis. Please remember that at this stage, they are recommendations. Council will need to discuss these reports and those decisions will be uh, debated next week. You may recall that last week we presented a verbal update to City Council and we estimated that the city's budget shortfall is $164 million due to a combination of lower revenues and higher expenses related to the COVID response. We are recommending using a combination of financial tools to make up for the revenue shortfall. We will be taking action on both the income and the spending side of the ledger. This includes reducing our planned transfers from the operating budget to the capital budget by approximately $46.5 million and also drawing on the development, service re development services reserve to accommodate the expenditure reductions or the revenue reductions there. These two steps will make better use of the money we already have. Reducing our expenses, however, is really key to balancing this budget. These reductions include workforce adjustments and project adjustments. On the workforce side, we are reducing spending on consultants, training, and travel. The far more difficult decision, however, is that we are again going to be making temporary layoffs. The decisions about specific reductions are still in progress, so we cannot yet share details. We stand by our commitment for affected employees to be the first to know and, and to do our best to soften the financial and emotional blows that a layoff can bring. It's important to understand that these reductions are, temp are expected to be temporary. We intend to revisit service levels in the future when it is prudent to do so.